In this series, we will have an overview of the entire compressed air system. We will be covering the following topics. We will begin with explaining a compressed air system setup. We will then cover on the different types of screw compressors and their energy efficiency. We will also introduce on the different types of dryers available, as well as on how to size them accordingly. We will then move on to filters and air tanks to complete the entire compressed air system. I will then end the presentation by summarizing and introducing the products and services offered by Asia Pneumatic. First, we look at what comprises of a compressed air system. The most important component, of course, is the air compressor. The function of an air compressor is to compress the atmospheric air to the pressure that you require for production. Typically, anything from 5 bar to 10 bar are the most common application pressure level. Next, onto the air dryer. The function of the dryer is to remove water content from the compressed air. We then have the air filters. As we all know, the compressed air is taken from the atmosphere, which contains contaminant particles such as dust and hydrocarbon particles. The air filters here function to remove such contaminants from the compressed air before being sent to the production site. And finally, the air tank or the receiver tank. The air tank is sometimes placed before the dryer. Whenever the air tank is installed before the dryer, it is known as a wet tank, as the air here still contains a lot of condensate water. If the air tank is placed after the dryer, it is called a dry tank, as the air here contains less condensate water. The air tank acts as a reservoir for the compressed air. Now, what are the common compressor technologies that are available in the market? There are two types, positive displacement and dynamic. So what are the differences between the two? For positive displacement, the air is compressed using a moving part, which compresses the air into a smaller space. For example, reciprocating compressors. These compressors are known to be one of the older technologies out there. However, till today, it is still considered as a relatively efficient system. The other type of positive displacement is rotary. As the name suggests, the elements in the compressor rotates to compress air. Rotary consists of screw compressors and screw compressors. Screw compressors are commonly used and has relatively quiet operation, which is suitable for laboratories. It consists of oil injected screw and oil free screw compressors. Oil-injected screw compressors uses oil to lubricate the compression chamber, whereas for oil-free screw compressors, no oil is used. Therefore, the air that is being compressed will be oil-free. Another type of compressor used in the industry are centrifugal compressors. These compressors are good compressors and generally used at plants which require large volume of compressed air. All right. So from all the compressors shown here, the most commonly used compressors in the market are screw compressors. We will learn more about the screw compressors in the upcoming slides. Here, I will first introduce the oil lubricated type. These types of compressors are available from 11 up to 500 kilowatt. These compressors have one stage compression. The advantages of these type of compressors are that it has relatively low investment costs. And due to the fact that these compressors are very common, the spare parts are readily available and easily serviced. Compared to oil-free type compressors, oil lubricated type compressors have higher efficiency. This is because it uses oil as a lubrication, which also prevents any back pressure. The disadvantages of this compressor, however, is that the outlet air will contain high oil residue due to the oil lubrication in the compressor. Even though an oil separator is used, the air that is compressed will still contain oil residue up to 3 ppm. F&B industries will not be able to accept these conditions. 
due to the risk of oil carryover to production. Because of this, corresponding filters require more maintenance care periodically to ensure filtration system is working well. Now, onto oil-free type screw compressors. The mechanism is almost similar as compared to oil lubricated screw compressors. However, oil-free compressors, due to the absence of oil, must have minimum two-stage compression in order to cool down the screw element. Another difference is the screw element does not have any oil to provide lubrication. Instead, it uses Teflon coating between the screw element to prevent wear and tear. These compressors are usually found in the semiconductor, electronics and the FNB industry due to the absence of oil in the compressor. These compressors are also classified as class 0, which is considered as the highest level achievable for air quality. The disadvantage of this compressor, however, is that it has very high overhaul costs. Usually overhaul is required for these compressors after 40,000 running hours. If overhaul is not performed, the efficiency of these compressors will drop significantly. Another disadvantage is that it has relatively lower efficiency compared to oil lubricated compressors. And finally, one more thing I would like to highlight is that the Teflon coating can be easily damaged, especially if the compressor is left idle for several days. When the screw element is left stationary without rotation, the Teflon coating will start to move and stick together and therefore cause damage. Therefore, it is always advised that during the idle period, the screw element should be manually rotated to prevent damages to the Teflon coating. All right, now we will move on and determine how to define energy efficiency of compressors. Compressors are commonly rated with its motor power rating. Flow output is referring to the actual flow at the compressor outlet port. Therefore, to calculate the energy efficiency it is very simple. The power input in terms of kilowatt is divided by the flow output in meter cube per minute to get your compressor efficiency in kilowatt per meter cube per minute. Now, let's talk about variable speed drive for BSD screw compressors. The energy efficiency at full load of VSD compressors are slightly poorer compared to fixed speed compressors solely due to the conversion loss. This area to be exact. What is conversion loss? All right, for VSD compressors, in order to produce variable speed control, it converts the inlet AC to DC and then converts it back to AC based on the required frequency. This conversion process is what we call conversion loss. That is the main reason why the energy efficiency at full load for VSD compressors are slightly poorer compared to fixed speed compressors. However, for part load, VSD compressors have a much better energy efficiency compared to fixed compressors. Why? Fixed compressors operate on load-unload operation. During the switching from loading to unloading, transient power wastage will occur. Also, during the unloading phase, approximately 30% of power is still being consumed. VSD screw compressors, however, do not have any of these wastages as VSD compressors will adjust its speed accordingly based on the demand requirements. Now we move on to the dryers. Water from compressed air must be removed before piping it to the production site. This is where dryers come into play. Dryers can be classified into two types, desiccant dryers and refrigerant dryers. So firstly, refrigerant dryers. Refrigerant dryers work similarly to an air-conditioned system. 
Air enters into the dryer, and Freon gas is used to cool down the air, which subsequently removes water content from the air. For refrigerant dryers, the dryness of air achievable is from 3 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius pressure dew point. Pressure dew point is the unit used to measure the air dryness. The pressure dew point is limited to 3 degrees Celsius because anything below 3 degrees Celsius is when water freezes. Therefore, refrigerant dryers can only provide maximum dryness of 3 degrees Celsius PDP. Other than that, these refrigerant dryers are also relatively small in size, as shown in the picture here. Now, it is very important to size your dryers. Correction factors have to be used to size your dryers correctly. An example is shown here. There are four correction factors altogether. Firstly, the inlet air temperature, the ambient temperature, meaning the environment temperature, the inlet air pressure, and finally the outlet air pressure dew point, also known as the dryness of the air. So first we will calculate the corrected airflow capacity based on this formula shown here. This formula is basically the airflow rate divided by the product of all the correction factors. By inputting the required parameters, we will obtain the corrected airflow. All right, so for in this case, the airflow rate that I require is 3.5 meter cube per minute. All right, and the inlet air temperature that I would require is 55 degrees Celsius, which has a correction factor of 0 0.79. Ambient temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, it has a correction factor of 0 0.9. The inlet air pressure of 0 0.8 MPa, which has a correction factor of 1.02. And finally, the outlet air pressure dew point of 20 degrees Celsius, which has a correction factor of 1 and I will get the corrected airflow capacity of 4.8 to 6 meter cube per minute. Based on this value, we will now be able to select the dryer model with the airflow capacity exceeding the corrected airflow capacity. So as long as the dryer is able to have an airflow capacity higher than this value, it will be uh, suitable to use. Moving on to desiccant dryers, also known as absorption method dryers. These dryers use desiccant and typically the material used are silica gel to absorb the water content of compressed air. These desiccant dryers can achieve maximum dryness of minus 70 degrees Celsius pressure dew point. The reason this can be achieved is because the method of drying the air is by absorption. All right, so there are two major types of desiccant dryers, which include heated type and heatless type. For heated desiccant dryers, it uses heat to remove water vapor from the desiccant material not in use at that point in the cycle. However, for heatless desiccant dryers, it uses the dry air generated by the dryer to remove water vapor from the desiccant material. Now on to filters. The types of filters available to ensure good air quality are divided into three types. Particulate filters are mainly used to remove dust and particles. Coalescing filters function to remove water and aerosols. The small droplets are trapped in the filter media and form larger droplets which are then removed from the filter. And lastly, activated carbon filters remove the hydrocarbon gases from the air. These filters are commonly used in the FNB industry. On to our final component in the compressed air system, air tanks. Air tanks or air receivers 
are an integral part in a compressed air system. It acts as a buffer between the compressor and the fluctuating pressure. For compressed air, the demand of compressed air will fluctuate at the production site. Therefore, the receiver tank will act as a buffer to handle these fluctuations of pressure. Proper sizing of the air tank is essential to provide stable pressure for the plant as well as to improve efficiency of compressors. Below shows the common sizing formula used to size air tanks. V, which is what we are looking for, is the volume of the receiver tank. T, which is the time for the receiver to go from upper to lower pressure limits. C is the free air needed. PA is the atmosphere pressure. P1 is the maximum tank pressure. And P2 is the minimum tank pressure. All these values can be taken from actual site conditions. And from this, the volume of the receiver tank can then be calculated easily. We have arrived at the conclusion to this series. We have learned on the key components in a compressed air system, which include compressors, dryers, filters, and air tanks. We have also explored all the different types of screw compressors available in the market, as well as the energy efficiency of variable speed drive and fixed screw compressors. Finally, we have also covered on how to choose the right type of dryers, filters, and air tanks, and also how to size them accordingly. Before we end this series, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our products offered at Asia Pneumatic. We supply Cobalco compressors. Our oil flooded screw compressors, Kobe Lion series, are available from 15 to 250 kilowatt. And our oil free screw compressors, Emerald series, are available from 15 to 275 kilowatt. We at Asia Pneumatic are able to provide you a one-stop solution for your compressed air system, whereby we work with you to size and to supply your compressors, dryers, filters, and receiver tanks. We also provide preventive maintenance as well as overhaul services if and when required. We also provide pressure flow controllers for your compressed air system. It helps reduce artificial demand and helps save energy anywhere between four to 25%. It also has a very short ROI period, typically one to two years. It also has a pressure stability of plus minus one PSI and therefore helps reduce production reject rate. It also helps to reduce maintenance of pneumatic equipment and it has instant response to system changes. To learn more on how the system can help reduce artificial demand and save energy for your compressed air system, do check out our series titled Demand Site Management and How to Achieve Energy Saving for Your Compressed Air System. Now, moving on to the other products offered. We also provide pneumatic hoists from Toku, Japan. Capacity of 140 kgs up to 30 tons. These are ATEC certified for explosion proof usage. For Zone 1, Zone 2, gas or dust. Similarly, we also have Raytag from UK. These are explosion proof lightings. And these lightings are ATEC and IECEX certified. And finally, thank you for your time. Should you require further clarification or further assistance, please contact as such. Thank you.